All right, uh, Marie, it is so good to speak with you. I'm very excited about this. Uh, the new album uh, has come out, and uh, we will be talking about that and playing some of it. Uh, but first, you have had a career going into its fifth decade of entertaining us, Marie Osmond. Do you ever plan on slowing down? Well, I had planned on it, but it just doesn't seem to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just like the Ever Ready Bunny or something. I just keep on going, but... Yeah. Gosh, I love music. I really do, Tater. I um, I never really thought that I would record another album. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, my first hit, I was tw I recorded it when I was 12 and a half with uh, Sunny Jane's Paper Roses. And I've had hits with my brother, and I've had hits on my own. And I mean, Meet Me in Montana, No Stopping Your Heart, wonderful songs. But uh, Jason Deere, who produced this album, he came to see the show. And he came backstage after, he goes, well, you have to sing. <laughs> and I was like, well, you're so lovely. And he goes, no, I'm serious. And, you know, Jason is just stinking talented. He uh, He's ridiculously talented with all the songs that he's written, you know, from Lady Antebellum to whatever. I mean, it's crazy. But anyway, um, we went into the studio, and I thought, hey, what the heck? I mean, if Tina Turner can do it and Bonnie Raitt, why can't I? And I had so much fun making this album. I really did. And the new album is called Music is Medicine. Is there a, is there a meaning behind that? Oh, absolutely. Throughout my life, uh, well, like you said, you know, over the decades, music has been my drug of choice. I mean, everybody else got high on other things, and I just got high on music. But, um, <laughs> you know, through the good times, the bad times, and everything in between. I have kind of a weird voice, Tater. Uh, the show here in Vegas, you know, I'm here with my brother. Oh, yeah. And um, it's, it, it's kind of fun because I can sing multiple genres of music. We used to call that versatility. Now it's called attention deficit disorder. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but like in the show, you know, I did, I performed on Broadway and I did King and I, and you know, you can't do that with country. You, you can't do, you have to sing legit mm -hmm. soprano with a British accent. And, and even in the show, you know, I do like opera. I sing uh, Nestum Dorma from Madam Butterfly, but my love, my passion, my, I guess, you know, from the time I was a little girl, I made that decision that country was the best. Mm -hmm. You know, country, at a time when radio did not play women, country did. Uh, Loretta Lynn, who was the, the person that really was my my ideal, my mentor, I guess you could say. Um, you know, she was having babies and writing songs and touring and, and married and all this stuff. And country loved her and embraced her. And I went, that's the kind of people I want to be around. That's who... You know, that's how that whole little bit country, little bit rock and roll happened, you know? So, uh, no, I love I love music. I love it all. I can tell it definitely comes through when you're talking. So on the new album, Medicine is Music, you have a few duets. Um, anyone that you were surprised to find working, you're working with on the new album? Well, it was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, there were a few surprises. Some of them I'm so grateful. Like, for example, Olivia Newton-John, who's my dear friend. Oh, my Here's gosh, the yes. <laughs> yeah, getting better all the time. John Rich. John, love his voice. My gosh. And, you know, I've done so many duet situations. John and our voices just kind of lilted together. It was re it's a beautiful song. Uh, Marty Rowe, Diamond Rio. I mean, come on, shut the door. The guy, <laughs> the mega monster, and uh, has had more number ones than I can tell you in, what, 30 years? Yeah. Their harmonies, their harmonies are phenomenal in Diamond Rio. But anyway, um, you know, to have him on there. But the one that was the big surprise for me, uh, Alex Boyer is another one I really hadn't planned on recording, but he's this mega YouTuber, and uh, he did um, Then There's You, which is just this gorgeous song about finding love or finding God or whatever you want to put to that song. It's beautiful. But anyway, we were in the studio, and I love Luke Bryant, but he no rapping, please. And so <laughs> and I, we did this. Jason and I came up with this song where there's this rap part. That's really, really cool. But, you know, to me, country and rap make crap unless it's done right. <laughs> and so Cisco was next door and the engineer goes, well, he's next door. So I went over and I said, hey, Cisco, I have this song. It's called Give Me a Good Song. And I know that you're not country, but I need it. I need a little rap. I played it for him. And I'm telling you, it was the coolest thing, Tater. No attorneys, no mm -hmm. management. No lawyer, you know, just, you know, no agent. Straight musician to over. musician, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and he said, I said, my gosh, Cisco, you're now a little bit country. <laughs> and we had the best time, but he really, I mean, the song's got banjos and everything. I mean, it's just, the production is so cool on it. 
But to have Cisco on it, it just, it, I, it wasn't planned, and it was just phenomenal. I love him. I adore him. He is a good artist. So speaking of duets, on your own show in 1981, you sing a duet, Suddenly, a hit you had with the late Annie Gibb, and Suddenly, it became a hit. It's such a beautiful song, and you two had a, a great connection in that performance. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Oh, Andy was a dear friend. Are mm-hmm. you kidding? Uh, loved Andy. That, you know, that you talk about music is medicine, you know, and, and it talks about, you know, overdose on the music instead of on the drugs. Andy, you know... <laughs> That many, many of my friends growing up are not here anymore because we they didn't understand the ramifications of drug abuse and things like that back then. And, um, you know, he was an artist that truly was taken way too soon. And, and Andy was clean. It's just his heart gave out, you know, from, mm-hmm. from the previous stuff. But, no, what, a, what an incredible artist. The camera loved him. Ugh, the music that he produced. And, of course, you know, he came from this amazing family. And we related on so many levels because I came from a big musical family. And uh, but uh, no, that he he did our show many times. We were very dear friends, very dear friends. Ah, uh, good. And that being said, uh, was there a button shortage on men's shirts that day? <laughs> what <laughs> was there a shortage of buttons on uh, men's shirts that day? <laughs> Why was his shirt open? open? <laughs> my uh, one of our other DJs told me to throw that in for you. So, <laughs> oh, honey, just, just so you know, that was the seventies. They all did that. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't buttons. It was belly buttons. <laughs> oh, that's an extra button, just like the one on my shirt right now. I got an extra button underneath the belly button is the one in there in the seventies. Okay, <laughs> and uh, we all re- <laughs> that is great. We all remember you from the early hits, and of course, the variety show with your brother. Uh, when is the last time you laced up your pair of skates? Uh, I think I hung those up in 76 or 9. <laughs> 79. <laughs> oh, they got a little dust on them, huh? <laughs> Sonia, Sonia Henny and myself, we retired. <laughs> it's not dust on the bottle, it's a little dust on the skates. <laughs> oh, you know, Donnie, Donnie played the goof, but he was actually the better skater. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, seriously, I'm 14 years old, and they come to me and they say, you know, you're going to start singing with your brother. And I was like, oh, okay. And you're going to be doing a television show with him. And I was like, oh, okay. And you're going to be ice skating. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you're like, that's too much of the icing on the cake. Don't be doing that now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's crazy life. It was pretty fun. Uh, you were speaking about this earlier. You've been uh, performing in Vegas with your brother since 2008. Uh, I'm sure to lighten up the mood pranks and all that being pulled uh, because you're siblings. And, you know, siblings are going to be siblings. Uh, who causes the most trouble? Is it you or your brother, Donnie? Well, you know, he's just trouble, but I might cause it. (laughs) You stir the pot. He's the pot you might start. (laughs) Uh, My gosh. You know, we were supposed to be here for six weeks. We're now in our eighth year. The show's been, you know, number one three years in a row, and it's been so fun. Uh, I was just talking to one of the the fun stations, and uh, they were out here for the ACM Awards, and I went over to do the radio thing and talk about Music is Medicine and the album, and I said, come see the show. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to them today, and they were like, well, we didn't know what to expect. I mean, come on, it was Donnie and Marie. And and the the head guy, he goes, oh, my gosh, I love you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, I had so much fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I mean, they're think, they they expect one thing and they get another. That is great. I like that. But, you know, that, it, it really is a fun show. And they're trying to talk us into another year. And we're like, isn't eight enough? And so, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, so, uh, when do we call quits? <laughs> We're, we're debating, but, you know, it really is an awesome stay-at-home job, and it's 22, 24 weeks a year. Olivia fills in the rest of the time, and and it gives you a chance to do all kinds of, of really things. It's, it's a it's a very personal show, and it, and it is a lot of fun. I bet it hey, is. Uh, people, huh? people come from all over the world, Taylor, to see the show, because the Donnie and Marie show was dubbed into 17 languages. And oh, so, wow. Like, last, literally last night, we had a person come in from... Um, the Philippines, and she looked at me. And she goes, "You were on my bucket list." And I thought, "Wow, I'm up there with jumping out of airplanes and sh- and shark tanks." You know, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, that is great. Uh, so you're busy with this brand new album. Congratulations, debuted in the top ten. I got to say, that is really really cool. Um, your tenth album, actually, as well. It is. sounds like you had so much fun recording it. Uh, how much has the business of making music changed from when you started? Uh, like when you said, twelve and a half years old. Oh, it's so different. Mm-hmm. I mean, Paper Roses, okay, I'm 12, I'm 12 years old. I fly out to Nashville. Uh, Sonny James is producing it. 
everything was done live. I mean, everybody, 60-something people were all in the same room, from your rhythm section to your strings to the Jordanaires who were standing next to me. You know, they did backgrounds for Elvis and everybody and all his records. And I, I'm 12 and a half years old. All I want to do is throw up. I'm so nervous. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and now, you know, everything is, is smaller, you know, instrument by instrument, except... The way we did music is medicine, man. I'm telling you, the stars aligned mm -hmm. because Jason, who is just ridiculously talented, uh, we got the best players in Nashville. It all just aligned so that we had every good player in in the studio. It was it truly was a miracle, and it, we you know you, you get those basic tracks and then you can elaborate on them from there now. But uh, and then we we did the vocals and it, it just gosh it was fun. But music doesn't change. The way you lay it down may change, but a good song is a good song. There's a line in Music is Medicine that says that they categorize it only makes me mad. There's only two kinds, good and bad, and that's the way it is. It's either a good song or it's a bad song. And, uh, exactly and right, music, yeah. Yeah, music changes your heart. And, and only a song, isn't it true, Tater, can take you back to a certain time in your life or document a moment that you're going through now. It's speaks to the heart in ways that nothing else can. And uh, boy, I tell you, um, you know, I, I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I've written books. I know the time it takes to do that. Making this album is like giving birth to quadruplets. You know, it's just, <laughs> you, you put your heart and soul into it, and it's, it, but it's so fun. It's the best. And you're proud of it. I was just recently watching the Tom Petty documentary on TV, and uh, one of the guys on there said the first time he heard a song by Tom Petty when he was just doing a demo for him, he said he just got this feeling in his gut, and he remembers the smell and everything around him the instant he heard that song. So I, I understand what you're talking about. As soon as you hear a good song, you just you know it for the rest of your life. That I'm telling you, it's true. It's why we wrote Give Me a Good Song, the one that I told you it was on. When it's a good it's a good song. You remember it. You sing along with it. Music is medicine. That it had to be the name of the album, you know. And and like I said, you know, hey, if Tina Turner and Bonnie Raitt and all these women can come back and sing, then so can I, because I can sing something a lot more legit at age twenty nine now than I could have when I was actually twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. So, uh, oh, speaking about your album. Uh, my favorite song is Unbreak This Breakup. It's such an emotional song about loss and shattered love. Uh, did you have any Hi. moments recording this new album where you had to step back and maybe collect yourself? Can I tell you, I love that you love that song. That is one of my favorite songs on the album. And the reason is, is if you'll notice, it takes you through a journey, whether it's finding love, refining love, losing love, you know, finding God. However, the whole album, every song has been chosen for a reason. You know, how music heals. Unbreak This Breakup, the biggest mistake, Tater, that I've mm -hmm. ever made in my life was I was I was too prideful to say I'm sorry. Mm. And, you know, you don't learn that when you're young. You learn that once you've been through the heartache and the hell of it all. And so, uh, you know, Love Love This Tough is another song that I love on there with John Rich. But, no, I'm so glad you love that song. I do love Unbreak This Breakup. Thank you. I'm yeah. so tickled you like that. <laughs> That's great stuff. Uh, so you're not only making great music uh, with this new album and making great miracles happen for children. Uh, most people want to do good in this world, uh, but you have to achieve that. Uh, I just want to thank you personally for being such an inspiration to many and helping thousands worldwide with what you do, Marie. Oh, you are so cute. You know, I, I am one of the co-founders of Children's America work along with John Schneider. You know John. Mm. John from Dukes of Hazard. Yes. You, you know, Bo Duke. I mean, he had a lot mm. of country hits, too. But, you know, did you know that I dated John back in the day? What? No. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah, we dated. And I really, truly, Tater, I thought things were going great. And then I realized John just used me to get to Donnie. <laughs> and so, you know. <laughs> ah, no way. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm so cheesy. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, well, it's not great, but I guess. <laughs> oh, no, we are dear friends. I've known John forever. And we've been through so much together. But he is he is a lovely guy. And we love those kids. I'll tell you a crazy step. Every minute. 62 children enter one of our children's hospitals. And basically that's a child, a little over a child every second. But, uh, but we help 11 million kids every year with uh, Children's Miracle Network now. And, and it, it, the best part is 100% of it goes to the kids, and it stays in your local community. You help your own community. You help your own kids. It's the best.
That is unbelievable. I can't believe you do that. I love that so much as well. Uh, so you've done Broadway, TV, reality TV, and now you even had your own radio show at one point. Uh, you want to co-host one of the shows with us here? Hey, I'll do it. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Okay, so when my mother was really sick, I didn't want to be on the road. I wanted to be home with her. And so I said, you know, I'll do a radio show. So we did five hours of talk a day. And it was at Talk and Music. And it was the most fun. And I, I'm i telling you, I've done television. I've done it, you know, like you said, I've done it all. There's nothing more personal, more cool, and more literally one-on-one. Like right now, we are having a three-way conversation. You know, we've got somebody listening to us. It is so intimate. Radio is the best. And when you can put music to it and touch people's hearts and set up songs and explain why you did things, it's the coolest. It's the best. I mean, even with Children's Miracle Network, those children will come and do radio interviews and be more real and honest than they ever will be on television because they get scared, you know? Mm-hmm. So 10 songs on this new album. Uh, what was the hardest one um, to do? What do you think was the uh, the toughest one to get nailed down? Ooh. Uh, well, I love them all. I don't, the toughest thing for me was to narrow it down to 10. Exactly. Uh, we act, yeah. We actually be 14 of them. Okay. And so what was what was hard was to put it down to 10. You know, Wild and Sweet is the toughest one. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but Wild and Sweet is one of my favorites, too, because it's like the perfect day with the person you love. You know, I, I was in kind of a bad marriage, my second marriage, for 20 years. And so when you find love again, it's just so beautiful, isn't it? And I, and, and I love the song with, with Marty Rowe, I'd Love to Be Your Last. Because when you finally find it, man, it's like being home. And it's just beautiful. And you finally have that person that will legitimize your life with you. That will just say, you know what, live this out with me. And so that might have that might have been, you know, the most tender one that I did, I think. And I don't baby you're crazy. I don't know. You know what? You're the first person that's asked me that. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's, well, I was just listening to Keith Urban because he just released an album called Ripcord, and he said that he recorded it. Uh, he had about 23 to 24 songs, and he had to narrow it down to about 13. And he's like, well, how should I do this? And he was like, how about I go about it as doing a set list for a concert? What I want to start out with, what I want right in the middle is the meat, what do I want to finish with? So, Amen. When, you know, you have to think that way. That's why, literally, when you are pacing your album, you go, I need a song to open with. I need a song to close with. I need a song to get intimate with. I need a song that will touch somebody's heart when i'm talking about it i want to i want people to relate to this i want and and that's why you know i i agree with keith i think keith is a monster talent Mm -hmm. and uh and uh, i couldn't agree with him more yeah an album you want to like put on at the first song and don't want to take it off until you hear the last song so it's almost like a book which you know about it is (laughs) well you know but but that is the absolute it's like pacing a show like here in vegas you know, it, it, it has to fly. You don't want people to, to think about time. You want them to just get so engulfed into the music that they just you take them on this ride. And that's, what the, that's what's important. And that's how music is the best. It's just the best. Speaking about the best, you are the best, Marie Osmond. Thank you so much for spending some of your You're day with so us. <laughs> You're so cute, Dater. Hey, I'm serious. You anytime. I know you're far away, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you, if you're in Vegas, you come see the show. You be my guest. All right, sounds like a plan. You're so sweet. I love that, Marie. All right, well, you have a great rest of your day. Okay. Hey, thank you so much, Tater. You have a great day too. All righty, bye bye. Bye bye.